Just a wonderful time of year as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Let's go to Lord and Song as we come together, number 225. Come Christians, join to sing. Come Christians, join to sing. Alleluia, amen. Loud praise to Christ our King. Alleluia, amen. Let all with heart and voice before His throne rejoice. Praise is His gracious choice. Alleluia, amen. Come lift your hearts on high. Alleluia, amen. Let praises fill the sky. Alleluia, amen. He is our God and friend. To us He'll condescend. His love shall never end. Alleluia, amen. Praise yet our Christ again. Alleluia, amen. Life shall not end the strain. Alleluia, amen. On heaven's blissful shore, His goodness will adore, singing forevermore. Alleluia, amen. Amen. Turn over to number 259, Angels from the Realms of Glory. As we come together to worship Him this morning. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, Worship Christ, the newborn King. Shepherds in the field abiding, watching all your flocks by night. God with man is now abiding, grander shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplation, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in His temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Though an infant, now we view Him. Share his father's throne, gather all the nations to him, every knee shall then bow down. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Amen. And that beautiful, wonderful name of Jesus, number 266, that beautiful name. I know of a name, a beautiful name, that angels brought down to earth. They whispered it low, one night long ago, to a maiden of low labor. That beautiful name, that beautiful name, from sin has power to That beautiful name, that wonderful name, that matchless name is 
<laughs> she's, she's, she's had she kind of made up. It's a beautiful song. Yeah, let's try it one more time. Isn't he beautiful? Beautiful, isn't he? Prince of peace, son of God, isn't he? Isn't he wonderful? Wonderful, isn't he? Counselor, almighty God, isn't he? Isn't he? Isn't he? Beautiful song that just says who God is. Isn't he wonderful and beautiful? <laughs> this little song is, is, is one Margie said she found in a, in a book. And I, I love the words of a tune. She loves it. I will never let go of my Jesus. And uh, I couldn't find the song anywhere on the internet. And I got to looking at it. And, and you'll recognize the tune when I start to sing it. <laughs> but it's just a, it's, it's a nice little song. I will never let go of my Jesus. I will never let go of my Jesus through his blood I am holy and free if you kill me you send me to glory where my Jesus is waiting for me it began in the garden of Eden a serpent a fruit and a fall bringing hatred and heartache and fighting ever since everywhere for us all I will never let go of my Jesus he is love he is joy he is peace if you kill me you send me to glory where all sorrow and suffering will cease so my love for the lord shall not waver nor my faith or discernment grow dim. It is only a little while longer. With his help I will stand firm for him. I will never let go of my Jesus. He is coming to set all things right. If you kill me, you send me to glory. Where I'll walk, not by faith, but by sight. I will never let go of my Jesus. Through his blood I am whole. If you kill me, you send me to glory, where my Jesus is waiting for me. Nice little song, in it? So what was the tune, anybody know? Yeah. Red River Valley. Psalms 48 this morning. Psalms 48. A legal document was filed in Murphy, North Carolina, and it created a puzzling situation for the courts there. A very eccentric woman named God in her will to receive part of her settlement. To settle the matter, a suit was filed naming God as the defendant. The local sheriff then was then appointed to serve a summons to God to appear. After several days, the sheriff brought us report, report, and he says, After due and diligent search, 
I cannot find God anywhere in, in this county. That's sad, isn't it? On April 1st of 1961, a Russian cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin, became the first human to travel in space aboard Vostok 1. Peering through the window of his spacecraft, he made the comment, I don't see any God up here. Later, Russian Premier Nikita Khrushchev, an anti-religious propaganda speech was made before the Central Committee of the Soviet Communist Party and said, why should you clutch to any God? Look, Garrigan flew into space and saw no God there. So the following Sunday, Dr. W.A. Criswell, the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, made this statement. He said, if these atheists would have stepped out of their space suit, they'd have met God. <laughs> but you see, these people don't hold the patent to unbelief. And atheism is not confined just to Russia. In fact, anti-God is spreading in our United States daily. On the United States coins and on your money, you have the words what? In God we trust. It's minted on them. There's been a move for years to eliminate these words from our currency. And they are still trying. And it may happen. But the true and living God will never be affected by any words on any money. An old king, Nebuchadnezzar in the Old Testament, he defied God. He learned the hard way that there indeed is a God and he must be accountable to him. And after he encountered God, he said this in Daniel 4, verse 34 through 37. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time, my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. But now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are true, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Do you know the God that he's speaking of here? Or do you just know about him? The knowledge of God is the most important knowledge that a man can acquire. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24 says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither the mighty glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that, glory, let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, with ex which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Psalms 48 exalts the true God who is. It begins with the words, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and concludes with the words, This God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. So well, let's look at our verses today. A song and psalm of the sons of Korah. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the great city, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the kings were established. They passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them and pain, 
as of a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. Salah. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Mark ye well her bulwarks. Consider her palaces that ye may tell it in the generation the following. For this is God, for this God is our God forever and ever, and he will be our guide even unto death. Let us pray, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. May you take these words today and enlighten us in the path we should take. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we draw closer to Christmas, I want you to understand today in these verses who this God is we're celebrating. So today we're going to focus on a few words in the last verse. This God is. This statement confronts so many individuals. This God is. It's a positive statement which is met with so many negative responses from so many people today when you say this God is. Because it declares that the one God, this God, is the one true God. It's a powerful declaration of truth that confronts and assaults all the mistaken beliefs that are out there. And there are several out there. They have false reasoning with regard to the existence of who God is. Here's just a few of them. Patheonism is someone who believes in all forces or the fact that the whole universe is God. Polytheism, a belief in many gods. I, I, I can't stand when people say, Oh, Mother Nature's getting mad. No, Father God's getting mad. <laughs> it's not Mother Nature. Deism, a belief in the existence of God, but that He created the world and He just left. And the world's left its own devices. He's unreachable, untouchable. And then you have atheism, which denies the existence of any God. And then you have agnosticism, which is someone who believes that it's not possible to know if God exists or not. What does the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, which is found in 2 Corinthians, have to say about such falsehoods? The answer is found in this verse right here. And then also in Psalms 14 and 53, Psalms 14 that we saw, we'll see in 53, and it begins with, The fool in his heart says, There is no God. Corrupt they are and have done abominable iniquities. There is none that doeth good. This statement in our verse today, verse 14, that God is confronts those who do not believe in the revelation of God with a truth that undermines their reasoning. This God is stands as a witness against all biblical verses about God. It condemns unbelief. It denounces false gods. And it will doom those who don't believe it to a day of judgment. John 17, 17. To believe anything else is to deny that Jesus was correct when he said, Thy true word is truth. Thy word is truth. The only credible authority on the subject of who God is, is God's Word. There was an Israeli doctor who was treating a Christian one day for a hand injury. And the doctor proclaimed to the Christian, I'm an atheist. And he said, 20% of the population of Israel are atheists. And when asked why, he explained, well... Our relatives were killed by Hitler in the Holocaust. And he said, if there were a God, why is there such evil in the world? And why would the Holocaust even happen? But you see, 
What people need to realize is that the presence of evil actually only proves one thing, the absence of God. Because the fact that there's evil in this world proves that God is. Let me see if I can explain it in a way that maybe we'll understand. It, it comes from physics. You know, there's no such thing as cold. There's no such thing as cold. All cold is is the absence of heat. That's physics, something you learn in grammar school. If you leave the door open when the air conditioning's on, you don't let cold out, you let heat in. And that heat affects the cold. It's the same way with dark and light. There is no such thing as darkness. All darkness is is the absence of light. I mean, if, if you open that door right there and, and you close it and you go in there and it's dark in there and you open it up, the darkness does not spill out into the room. The light fills the room that was dark. So all darkness is, is the absence of light. So this idea of no cold or dark is, is physics and thermodynamics. You learn it when you're a child. We don't remember it, but we learn it when we're a child in grammar school. But this is the same way with evil. Evil is not a thing that's there. It's the absence of God. When you take God out of the picture, evil takes over. So the evil in this world is because people will not turn to God. The reason that the evil is growing in this world is because people are pushing God out. So the only way evil is going to be combated is if we put that good and we put God back in the equation. So we need to fill people with God. Today's statement, God is not only dumbfounds these people who don't believe there is a God, but it also confirms our faith. Faith is waning in this world today. Faith that even some of the faithful are starting to waver. There's, there's faithful people who are starting to accept the things of this world. And this message today is a confirmation of what your faith is. It's the great statement of faith. This God is. This, no other God, this God, this living being. And it says this God is, he exists, he's real. There's no disputing that statement. But the best part about that verse is this God is what? Our God. The one thing we need to proclaim to the world is there is no other God but this God and he's ours. I will stand, we love this little song, I'll never let go of my Jesus, if you kill me, you send me to glory. But I'm afraid of what people will think. I'm afraid of what they'll do. This God is my God, and I'm not going to change. The God who is the great Lord in verse 1. The God who is the great King in verse 2. The God who is Lord Almighty in verse 8. It's this God. This simple word, this, our faith is founded on this God who's revealed himself to us in his word, who has revealed himself to mankind in marvelous ways. He revealed himself, as we saw when we were in Sunday school, in his creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1, Isaiah 40.28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. But another way God reveals to us is what we celebrate that he is this God this time of year. We celebrate this God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1.1 1, 1 through John 14. 
1 Timothy 3.16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. This God. But most of all, God reveals to us who He is through Scripture. 2 Timothy 3.16, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Our faith is founded on this self-revealing God. Throughout history, the church, the creeds, the confessions of faith has summarized everything that the Bible teaches. We have ours hanging on the back wall. The greatest creeds most people know are the Apostle Creed and the Nicene Creed. They declare who God is, this God. The Apostle Creed dates back from a half century or so from the last writing in the New Testament, and it begins with these words, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. The Nicene Creed, which was adopted in a Nicene Council meeting in 325 B.C. or A.C., it begins with these words, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. This God. And as much as we appreciate these creeds, as much as we appreciate ours on the back wall, which speak what the Bible teaches, our faith should never rest in any creed. Eliza Hewitt wrote a hymn, My Faith Has Found a Resting Place, and it says this, My faith has found a resting place, not in device or creed. I trust the ever-living one whose wounds for me shall plead. Don't ever put our faith in anything of this world, even a creed of a church. Our faith should always be in this God that they proclaim. Another wonderful thing about God is also in these verses you see the security of our future. The future is where we'll spend eternity. The entire Word of God is intended to prepare us for life here and hereafter. The God who is, is a God for all times. Look at that last verse once again, verse 14. This God is our God forever and ever. And He will be our guide even unto death. He is sovereign. He is this God, our God. He is our shepherd. He will be our guide. And He is our security even unto death. How comforting to know that as we traverse through this world, through all the dangers, toils, and snares that we face, we are on the way to the Father's house. And He's with us every step of the way. To know of a certainty that this God is drives away whatever fears we might have. The one who knows the God who is knows that He's great enough to handle any problem we have. Charles Spurgeon said, How great Jehovah is, essentially none can conceive. But we can all see that He is great in the deliverance of His people, great in their esteem who are delivered, and great in the hearts of those enemies whom He scattered by their own fears. Instead of the mad cry of Ephesus, great as Diana, we hear the reasonable, demonstrable, self-evident testimony, great as Jehovah. There is none great in the church but the Lord. Jesus is the great shepherd. He is our Savior and a great one, our great God and Savior, our great high priest. He will care for us. He will be there for us as our guide, even unto death. There's nothing for us to fear. God tells us, don't be afraid. Do not worry. Do not fear. 
But the actual words, do not be afraid or do not fear, are found more than 60 times in God's word. To not worry, to not fret over life is 365 times. But do not fear or do not be afraid. Why would something as simple as those words cancel out all the fear we have? Because God is. It's that simple. And He cares. This God is the preeminent God. He is God, this God, no other God. He's a personal God. He's our God. He's a permanent God. It says forever and ever. And He's a present God. He'll be our guide even unto death. So He's there for all times, forever and ever, but He's present with us now and He's personal. A saintly widow's faith was put into asking, action when she asked if she feared living alone. She answered, when fear knocks, I just let God answer the door. This God is our God. He's the architect of the universe, the creator of all. He is the ruler of rulers, the leader of leaders. He always was, He is, and always will be. He is eternal. He's true, holy, all-powerful in love. He is unchanged, unchanging. He is never unavailable. He is sovereign. He is faithful. And He is my God. When I fall, He lifts me up. When I am weak, He is strong. When I am lost, He finds the way. When I am afraid, He's my courage. When I stumble, He steadies me. When I am hurt, He heals me. When I am broken, He mends me. When I am blind, He leads me. When I am hungry, He feeds me. And when I face trials, he is with me. When I face persecution, He shields me. And when I face problems, He comforts me. And when I face loss, He provides for me. And when I face death, He carries me home. This God, our refuge and strength, a very help in trouble. So, you know somebody who has cancer? Remind them that this God is. How about somebody that's alone? Remind them that this God is. How about somebody from a broken home? Remind them that this God is. How about somebody who's uncertain or insecure? Remind them this God is. How about somebody that's stressed, depressed, or depressed? Remind them this God is. Rest in the truth that there is a God in heaven who is loving and good, too wise to make mistakes. And if you cannot say this God is my God and Jesus is my Savior, today's the day to rest in Him. And you too can say this God is my God forever and ever. He will be my guide even to death. So as you celebrate Christmas this year, this holiday season is just a few weeks away as we get into it. And a lot of churches uh, celebrate Advent, the coming of the Lord. Take time to remember this God. This is the God we are celebrating. Not some little baby in a manger. Not someone that bestows gifts upon people. Not some, this God. A God who is worthy of our worship, a God who is worthy of our celebration, a God who is worthy of our joy, a God who is everything we could ever want, a God who is there every single day, will be there for eternity. This is the God we celebrate this Christmas. And He came as Emmanuel, God with us. But He came as a little baby to show how we are to humbly approach Him every single day let's pray dear lord and heavenly father we just thank you for the message of your awesomeness that this is the god that we celebrate this christmas season lord there's so much going on in this world and everybody's so worried but we know this god and this god is and you could fill in that is with so many things. But Lord, the most thing is you are here. You are God with us. You may have ascended into heaven, but you gave us the spirit to be with us. And Lord, we have nothing to fear and nothing to worry. And we have a message to spread to so many. And we need to take that stand that this God is the God of Christmas. 
And we praise you and we thank you for that. And may your joy be filled this morning with this God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand and sing number 486. Come ye sinners. Come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore. Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love and power. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of my dear Savior. Oh, there are ten thousand charms. Beautiful time of year. We have wonderful music and hymns to sing about the joy of Christmas. But let that joy spill out. And tell people who this God is. James, would you dismiss us, please?